Welcome to the Nurse Station. My name is Maria Mobley and today we are going to learn about IV fluids. So I've read so many nursing textbooks and this can be made uh, a very difficult read. Uh, so I feel you students, if you're reading your book and you're like, well, what is going on? We are going to keep it so basic, so simple. I only need you to know water versus particles, okay? So fluid versus particles, however you want to think about it, because we need to keep it basic. And when we think about the process of osmosis, doesn't fluid go from higher concentrations to lower concentrations? Or fluid, if there's a lot of particles, needs to move to dilute um, so many particles located in an area, okay? So keep it very basic. I have created um, a fake homeostasis of our body. So pretend that our normal, I, I use this a lot and I don't even really know if I'm using it in the proper context, but normal, we're gonna use it. <laughs> four water to four particles in our body. Pretend that is our homeostasis. So look right now, I have three different blood vessels. Picture this is our vein. Okay, this is our, our peripheral IV, so our fluid is going to run into our vessel, into our vein. And pretend that I, right now, have my normal fluid or bodily fluid in our cells. So four water to four particles in each cell. So pretend this is our normal body fluid, okay? And we're going to transfuse these bags into our cells and we are going to see how fluid shifts in our body when we transfuse different IV fluids. For me, that is what is priority to understand. When I give this fluid to my client, how will it shift in my client's body? How will it affect their bodily fluid in terms of their intracellular to extracellular volume or fluid, okay? so. Let's start with isotonic solutions. The two big isotonic solutions I would like you to remember is normal saline, and I've written it a couple ways because it can be presented as a couple different uh, ways. Normal saline, NS, 0.9% sodium chloride. That is all normal saline, okay? The other isotonic solution is lactated ringer. Uh, very, very commonly administered medications because fluids are medications. And remember, we want to know, when we give a fluid, is there any shifting? If I give this fluid, will it just stay right in my vein and artery? Or if I give a fluid, where will fluid come out of my cell into my extracellular space? Or if I give a fluid, will fluid shift into my intracellular space? Those are the three main types of shifting we're gonna see with these three types of fluid solutions, okay? So isotonic directly mimics our normal bodily fluid. So let's look at this bag. It is directly mimicking our normal body fluid, all right? So when we transfuse this in, we're gonna give it to our client. We have four water, part of, four water to four particles, okay? Now let's look at this. Is the concentration of fluid and particles inside my cell equivalent to the concentration of fluid and particles outside my cell or in my extracellular space? They are equal. There will be no shifting of water inside the cell into our intracellular space and there will be no shifting of water from our intracellular space to our extracellular space. When you give an isotonic solution, it will stay in those vessels. It will stay in the vein or artery that you are infusing this fluid into. We use isotonic solutions for so many things. Think of if a client was hemorrhaging, if they were bleeding, aren't they losing a lot of fluid from their extracellular space? A dehydrated client, didn't they lose a lot of water in their extracellular space, right? Don't their particles get highly concentrated? A dehydrated client can have a lot of sodium. So when we give isotonic solutions, the fluid will stay right in the vessel that we administer it in. It will stay in our extracellular space, okay? Now, let's shift to hypotonic solutions. When you think hypo, I want you to think less. And when you think tonic, I want you to think 
particles. So in this IV solution, there are less particles. There's only two particles to my water. So in hypotonic solutions, there is more water or fluid than particles. Hypotonic, less particles, okay? Examples of these solutions, and I need to remind you that this is just a couple fluid examples. Your instructor can give you many more and you just need to add it to your chart. So the examples I want you to remember for hypotonic is half normal saline or 0.45% sodium chloride, the same thing, just written in different ways. D5W, which is dextrose 5% in water, and a little tidbit about D5W. In the bag, when it's sitting on the shelf, it is considered an isotonic solution. So when it's sitting on the shelf, it looks like this. Fluid and particles are equal. However, when you give D5W into the client's body, dextrose, which is your particle, is used so quickly that the particles become less or less in concentration to the fluid. So in the body, once the client's body uses the dextrose or uses the particles, doesn't it mimic a hypotonic solution? And in my nursing brain, I don't, not that I don't care what the fluid is sitting on the shelf, but it's much more important to know how is it affecting my client's body. So if you see D5W or your instructor tells you it's an isotonic solution, that is absolutely true. However, once it is utilized in the body and the dextrose is, uh, the client uses the dextrose so there's less particles of water, it actually mimics a hypotonic solution in the body. That's why I put it under hypotonic because again, I am much more concerned about how does the fluid affect my client's body, okay? So, let's transfuse our hypotonic solution into our vessel. So again, let's throw it into our IV and put it in our vein, okay? So, I have transfused my hypotonic, my solution with less particles to water into my vessel. Now let's look at this. The concentration of water, is it higher outside the cell or in our extracellular space versus inside the cell or our intracellular space? It is much higher. So by the process of osmosis, fluid going from higher concentrations to lower concentrations or fluid needing to dilute higher particle concentrations, because also look at this, there are more particles inside the cell than outside the cell. So doesn't our fluid want to go dilute those particles, right? So hypotonic solutions shift fluid into the cell. Because again, when we administer a hypertonic solution, there's more fluid in our extracellular space than our intracellular. So you're gonna see the fluid shift inside of the cell and you're gonna see our cells balloon or get bigger. So with hypotonic solutions, you need to think my fluid, because we put more fluid particles on the outside of my cell is gonna shift in to go to a lower concentration of water and also to dilute the higher concentration of particles, okay? Our last solution is hypertonic. And again, if you remember hyper, it means more. And tonic, again, I want you to think particles. So with a hypertonic solution, you have more particles in your fluid bag versus your water, all right? Listed a couple examples. Dextrose, 5% and 0.9% saline or sodium chloride. This is not D5W, dextrose and water, it is dextrose and saline. So this is D5 normal saline. You can have D5 and a half normal saline. You can have D5 and LR, and you can have 3% saline, 5% saline. Again, this is not the full list of hypertonic solutions. But these are all examples of hypertonic solutions. So let's transfuse it into our vein. When we transfuse this into our vein, we have a solution which has less fluid to particles. Now let's look at our concentrations. Do you have more fluid inside the cell or outside the cell? You absolutely have more fluid in the intracellular space. So again, by the process of osmosis, 
our fluid is going to shift from inside the cell to outside the cell, right? Because not only is the fluid trying to go from a higher concentration of fluid to a lower concentration of fluid, your fluid is also trying to dilute a higher concentration of particles. It's trying to dilute this highly concentrated particles in our extracellular space. So when we give a hypertonic solution, you will see that you're losing fluid from inside your cell and your cell will start to shrivel, okay? And cautious administration with hypertonic solutions. There's a lot more than this just listed, so please utilize your resources to uh, make sure that you're performing the best on your exams. Quick little review, isotonic, let me draw it again. When we administer an isotonic solution into our vessel, there is no shifting. No fluid goes from our extracellular to our intracellular, and no fluid goes from our intracellular to our extracellular. It is equal. It is an even ratio. It is the same amount of water particles inside the cell to outside the cell. Same amount of, same, I need to stop saying water particles. Same amount of water molecules, and then same amount of particles inside the cell to outside the cell. No shifting. When you give a hypotonic solution, you have a lot more water on the outside of your cell than inside. So water will go from your extracellular space to your intracellular space, ballooning your cells. And then hypertonic solutions, you have less water on the outside of your um, cell in your extracellular space, a lot more particles. So fluid or water from inside your cell, your intracellular space, will go to the outside of your cell, to your extracellular sp space, causing a shriveling of the cells. I really hope this helps. I know it can seem overwhelming when you read it in a textbook, but keep it simple. Always think about concentrations and think about things going from higher concentrations to lower concentrations, all right? Um, if this helped you, please help somebody else in your class so that we can all be successful. Take care.